Hey everybody, John Wagdon here with Dev Central, and it's Whiteboard Wednesday time. And today we're going to be talking about the details of the TLS handshake. And I was looking around the internet the other day and uh, trying to figure out how many websites are protected with SSL TLS, you know, this, this HTTPS encryption. And there's a whole bunch of them. I could never find a specific number. I mean, the, the number changes all the time. But needless to say, uh, a lot of people are headed this direction. Uh, protecting their applications with, uh, with TLS or, or SSL. And so it's important sometimes to know what goes on with the beginnings of this handshake uh, for, for the TLS uh, protocol. And so in this example, I'm just going to kind of walk through what happens here. And over here on this side, you've got the client, uh, maybe your internet browser, whatever it is, whatever the client is. And then we're looking at the, uh, the big IP as the server here, which by the way, keep in mind that there are, so this is a client side SSL transaction that's happening into the big IP. There's a whole bunch of other events that could happen behind the big IP. So we won't talk about those today. So this is the, this is the client side connection into a big IP. All right, so you've got your big IP, you've got um, a client requesting your web application. And so the first thing that happens is this client says hello, and it literally is a client hello message. And essentially, that's the client saying, hey, I want to establish this secure transaction. And so, uh, so the big IP gets that. And as a part of this hello, there's things like the, uh, the version number of like TLS or maybe SSL v3, for example, that kind of thing that, that is included here. Another key thing that's included in the client hello is the list of ciphers uh, that the client can support. And so let's say, for example, this is like an, an older client, you know, Internet Explorer 8, for example, whatever. Uh, well, it may not be able to support, say, this brand new elliptic curve, diffie Hellman, ephemeral, all this kind of crazy newer advanced encryption. So it may say, hey, hello, big IP. Here are the only cipher suites that I can support, but let's talk securely anyway. And so on the big IP, um, so, so when it does that hello, it's going gonna, it's gonna to offer up these different cipher suites. So on the big IP, it's important to configure uh, your cipher list uh, based on what you want to support, based on what you can afford to support from a risk perspective, that kind of thing. Uh, and we talked about that in another Whiteboard Wednesday, so you can get out there and watch that one uh, in, in terms of how you, can, uh, how you can configure big IP cipher suites. And so once you have those, you know, th those are configured on your big IP with, with however you configured them. Uh, the big IP or the server is going to get to be the one that chooses the cipher suite. So again, it's important to, to configure those on the big IP and to order those in the way that you want them to be ordered, that kind of thing. So nonetheless, the big IP chooses the cipher suite that it's going to use and then it sends back a server hello back to the client and it also sends its uh, certificate and then it says the hello part is done. One key thing that's included in this certificate is the public key uh, for the server. And so, uh, and that's important uh, when you come down here after the hello done, um, the client is going to get that certificate which includes the public key and it's going to uh, create a pre-master uh, secret as it were and it's going to encrypt that with the public key that it now has from the server uh, because it got it uh, via the certificate here. The nice thing, or the interesting thing about all this is this gets into that asymmetric encryption. This is the uh, um, this is the whole public key, you know, cryptography. This is, you know, one, you, you, can, you can encrypt something with one key, a public key, and then the only other person that can decrypt that is the one that has the private key. And we won't get into the details of, of asymmetric encryption. But needless to say, this is where the asymmetric encryption starts to happen in the, uh, in the handshake. So when the client creates the pre-master secret and then it encrypts it with the public key, it's going to send that back to the server and it's going to say, and this is part of the key exchange, this uh, encrypted uh, pre-master secret. The server gets it over here, and it's going to be able to decrypt it because it has the private key. And so all of this right here is asymmetric encryption, kind of this portion in here, asymmetric encryption. And what this, what this, what this is designed to do is this is designed to establish ultimately a shared session key, a shared symmetric key that can be used between the client and the server. Um, and the reason you want to establish a symmetric key is because symmetric encryption is significantly faster and more efficient than asymmetric encryption. And so ultimately you want to get to that point where we're using symmetric encryption. But in this, in this portion of it, you have to use the asymmetric 
um, because it's, it's, uh, it's a better way to do things in terms of the key exchange. All right, so the pre-master secret has been encrypted with the public key of the server that was uh, established from the certificate here. That's sent over to the server, to the big IP. The big IP is going to decrypt that, and it's going to generate that symmetric key that we're all looking for. Um, and, then, uh, and then it's going to say, hey, uh, let's change now to the symmetric encryption now that we have the symmetric key. Uh, the client is going to do a similar thing. It's going to say, hey, here's the, here's the pre-master secret encrypted with your uh, public key, but then the client is going to go ahead and generate the symmetric key as well, and then the, the client is going to send what's called a change cipher spec uh, message and then a client finish message. The change cipher spec is basically the client telling the server, the big IP now, hey, big IP, we're done with the, uh, with the key exchange, and now I'm changing now to the symmetric encryption and then I'm going to send you a client finish, which means I'm done, and so now I've moved on to the symmetric part of this, and that's how we're going to communicate now with this bulk encryption. So over here on the server side, he gets a client finished uh, message, so he knows the client's done now, and he has also changed to symmetric encryption, and so he's going to send the client back a change cipher spec message, and then a server finished uh, message as well. This, this is encrypted, by the way, with this new symmetric key, and so once the client can decrypt that and understands, hey, now we're talking, you know, with the same shared key for symmetric encryption, now you're down here to where you can encrypt all your communication. So essentially what's been done here is uh, the client has established a secure uh, line of communication with the big IP, with the server. Um, and the, the fascinating part about this is that it's been done um, with, with kind of this, uh, with this, with this asymmetric encryption that then leads to a symmetric encryption capability. Um, so it's kind of a fascinating thing. So it's, it's, uh, it's important sometimes to know kind of what happens through the process here, through the steps of a TLS handshake. Um, there are some different um, kind of on the big IP side of the house, there's some different I rules that could fire at, at different points on this and we won't get into the details of that uh, right now. But it's, it's kind of cool to know that there's some programmability aspects that can come into play literally in the middle of this handshake that you can manipulate some things or, or you can change some things based on what you need to do with your uh, web application. So, so anyway, so that's the TLS handshake. That's how it works. And uh, so I hope you've, hope you've learned a little something here. Um, hope, uh, hope you can take this and maybe if you need to reconfigure your big IP with, uh, with some of your Cypher Suite listings, or if you need to go out to your clients and say, hey man, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop supporting your legacy you know, encryption methods just because I can't, I can't afford to do that from a risk perspective anymore. Um, I don't know, you, you do what you gotta do. You know? But at least you understand, hopefully, kind of how this whole thing works. So, uh, so thanks for hanging in there with us today. Thanks for, uh, thanks for stepping through the TLS handshake with us. And uh, we'll see you guys out there in the community.